What's going on guys, VZ Duels here, and today we are back with Tri Sprites, our absolute go-to deck here on this channel. Um, and as you can see from the title, we are adding in one of the latest engines, which is Horus. Now, I will go more in-depth with it, but simply put, it is just a phenomenal engine. This, this particular build got me first place at Locals, um, and it ran phenomenally and then as i go along with this i will go ahead and explain why that is the case with each given card so we'll just go ahead put those off to the side and start with the main deck so as we know the sprites work very well with the tribrigade engine because of all the level twos however the one thing that i've been noticing in this current format is that um, going second, it kind of becomes a little bit difficult to have a hand full of these sprites. So having like one or two with other ways to get monsters on board is a little bit more effective. So I am starting to cut down on the sprite stuff. As much as I want to run two red just for going first and protecting against things like Droll and Nib. Um, one red has been proving absolutely fine. Uh, blue will basically get you access to it. Jet or jet to starter, starter to this can get you to it. Um, but simply put, I did cut the jet down to two, just because you do not run nearly as many targets as you do for blue. I mean, blue you have these four jet. You're pretty much only gonna have like two or three, depending on what you run. But um, I did want to cut the third blue, but for the tournament, I played the three, and so far I put some good results in. But I do want to try to fit Pixies back in here just in case I run into a deck that has a massive beater that this deck can struggle with. Because currently that is still a bit of a struggle with this deck is the big, big, big monsters like 4k, 5k access codes and stuff. Um, especially towers that have protection and are that big. Um, but that's it for the sprite monsters. Uh, we have the Tri Brigades. And we're starting to actually put a little bit more into them. So we are adding in Fractal finally. And um, the reason being for that is that we are in a format right now where you kind of have to push through a lot of things. So having as many one card starters as possible is pretty much called for right now. Um, as Tri Sprite was prior, it was starting to become two card combo. And has been for quite some time, especially after Elf has left the format and Starter has been hit to two. Um, the deck started seeing itself being a two card starter sort of thing. So the Fractal helps alleviate that, gives you materials in Grave, gets you your searches. It can bait out things like Ash, and then you can then use um, Starter to keep going or other cards to keep going. But um, Plus having just another name, and the fact that this variant actually doesn't necessarily mind um, not using the sprite stuff. So the tri Brigade package is starting to become a little bit more prevalent now for tri-sprite variants, I think. Um, so then that's it for the tries. So then here is the Horus package. Very, very small, very, very minute, because anything that's not Imseti monster-wise is absolutely dead. However, the thing I love that's synergy about this deck is the fact that the non Imsetis currently are all Tri Beasts. This is Beast, this one's Beast Warrior, and then the other one, uh, Keb, is Wing Beast. But uh, Keb doesn't really do much in terms of its effect. It is a nice beater over Duamatef, which makes me kind of uh, considering running it over this. But um, in the case that I do get this thing's effect, I'd rather have this one over Keb's effect. Um, and just, again, uh, it... I mean, Duamatef is honestly the weakest of the three extras, so Happy is the strongest, which is why I'm kind of shocked that it wasn't the secret rare, but... All in all, um, I don't really get to resolve these, but if I do, it's basically because I set a big back, uh, big uh, spell trap uh, at my end phase, and King Sarcophagus, my opponent has Harpy's Feather Duster, 
that's when I would truly capitalize off it, and then happy would be the one you want to leave on the field, so that way you could add that king sarcophagus back, add back anything else that you set, or just get follow-up for the previous torrent, or if for some reason you have, like, I don't know, Ash or Valor. Well, I, my deck doesn't run Valor, but if you have something in Grave that you can use against your opponent, you could add that back. So Happy's a very good recursion kind of card and lets you kind of help with grind games and stuff. But Horus is very good for this deck, and you'll see why later, aside from the fact that, again, they are uh, Tri-Beasts outside of Imseti. And... Um, Oh yeah, that's the other thing I need to discuss with them. They are the beaters for this deck. So the problem with this deck that I was running into is just the fact that you're always having to use these small monsters to build up into these big monsters, and you're going against these decks that just kind of already have big beaters. I mean, even as they're like level 4s and stuff, you'll generally be dealing with like 17 to 1900. That's something that this deck can't just roll over so easily. So um, the horses help you with that. But moving on, Nimble Package, we actually finally have found a way to cut down our Angler to 1, because I am sick and tired of running 2 of this card. I'm sorry that, I mean, it's obvious why people do it. It's for the sake of guaranteeing Sprint, but I'm sick of pretending that we should be running 2, because this ultimately is a brick in a hand uh, for regular Sprite variants and such. But because of the Horus Engine... And because of other cards, now this card has a lot more utility in case you see it in hand. This card has utility if it's still out of the deck, and you don't even necessarily need the um, sprint to get this engraved. But uh, yeah, that'll go into our one, one card combo and then our broken card for the deck. But uh, we, we started to cut down the nimbles too, so we're kind of just leaving room for a little bit of everything. And honestly, this deck has always been just extra deck tight. Everything else can be kind of crammed in here in some way, shape, or form. Last thing to round off the monsters, three Ash Blossom, because it affects every deck in some way, shape, or form. No, at least nearly any deck in some way, shape, or form. And while I still hold to it that it is a very minimally impactful card, um, it can still kind of cripple your opponent if they are really down on their luck with stuff. I mean, you can use this against a Rescue Aces Emergency and shut them down completely, which is uh, very good. Do this against a Branded uh, branded Fusion, you shut down a Branded Player instantly. Uh, against the Chimeras, shut them down instantly, the, the Sword Knight. Um, so this card can shut, card, shut decks down, it's just you have to know when to best time it. Uh, so that's it for Monsters, moving on to Spells. Three King Sarko. Um, people do run two in some variants of Horus, and I see why, I understand why, but I feel that if you're especially going into game one, that running three is a necessity, just for the sake of the fact that you cannot get your Horuses out without this name on your field. And until we get the field spell to help us with this, um, you should have the three, because this card alone with as many cards in your hand it doesn't even matter what card you have whether you can plus off of them or not this card will get you your engines and will get you running uh with your stuff so this card is a must have at three currently because if you don't see your imseti you need to see this and then you'll have access to your horus engine otherwise you're gonna have your dead duamatef you're gonna have your dead happy in hand you're gonna maybe have a very bad hand and nothing else to do King Sarcophagus really helps to unbrick those dead hands, and it can really plus off of cards, particularly in this build, like Angler. You have the Angler in hand, use this, send the Angler. Now you get a free send of a Horus Monster, and you get the Nimble Angler's effect. Uh, send a Nerval or a Kit, and you get those effects too. And then the same thing goes for Imseti. If you have Imseti or this, you pitch those cards, and then you plus which is why I see that synergy with this variant so much, and I think people are really sleeping on it. Um, and it, it doesn't even necessarily have to pertain to Sprite. It could just be for the Tri-Brigade engine. But, of course, we do like the Sprites because they have negates that uh, Tri-Brigade does not offer. Um, two-starter, because that's all that we're allowed to run. 
uh, one smashers just to basically break through everything. I've started to finally grasp the importance of smashers right now. Uh, there is a lot of decks that do swapping out. I mean, we have things like, uh, we have things that swap things out quickly, like, uh, pearlies and, um, you have, uh, Unchained, you have, um, you have the Vanquished Souls, you have, uh, Rescue Ace with their Emergence, you have, uh, Rescue Ace with their Impulse, their, um, Airlifter, uh, this is the thing that pretty much says, I'm gonna banish whatever you're gonna try to swap that card out for, so it doesn't matter if you try to chain to it, I'm gonna remove it. Um, just being a non-targeting and a banish is just absolutely broken. Um, and I think that with this ratio of, uh, spoiler alert, 42 cards, um, this card is gonna be buried enough to where it will not clog, clog your hands all that much. Um, and of course, there's another necessary one card starter is Foolish Burial. Um, reason why I run so many different cards, and I think I've said this in a previous deck video, uh, deck list, um, is that sometimes you just need different names because you have that hard restriction. Like, you can't do two starters in one turn. Um, those ones say you can only activate. So, luckily this is, you can only activate once per turn, but, um... If it's just an all-purpose, you can only use this once per turn, then you get kind of screwed over. So having just that other way to do your one start, one card combos is just, you have to have multiples of those. Um, but yeah, Foolish Barrel is, of course, clutch. You send the Angler so that you don't need to use the Sprint. You send the Kit. You send maybe Happy or something, um, just to, you know, whatever, whatever the case may call for. But Foolish Barrel is still a very good card. Uh, two droplets, and that's just because, again, quick effects, uh, making it where your opponent can't respond to it. It was always the great debate between this and Dark World No More. I was always a fan of Droplet more so, just because of the fact that you can shut off spell trap uh, reactions from your opponent, as opposed to Dark World No More, where spell and trap can easily get through, and then following that would be monster. Um, but just the fact that you need something in your main deck uh, going first or second in game one, this card can do either one, and very effectively. And again, this is a deck that can capitalize off of sending cards out of hand, depending on what kind of hand you have. So you can even plus off of using that in this particular build. And then the last two spells are going to be our necessary format calls. Harpies, Feather Duster, and Call by the Grave. Uh, this card is absolutely clutch. I can't tell you how many times I've drawn this off of Imseti's effect and my opponent drolls, and then I use this against their droll. Um, I think I did it once with PK variant, and then I did it uh, twice in this tournament. Uh, one in my last round against Rescue Ace that ultimately turned the entire tides of the game. Uh, but yeah, this card is a necessity right now. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, I, I used to run the too evenly, because it is definitely a stronger card, but um, a thing I've realized is that people then just start slowly activating cards and dwindling down and just setting up follow-up. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster is just kind of like a snap reaction, and it just pretty much clears. So, like, Rescue Ace, they have to do everything at once, otherwise that's it. They don't really capitalize nearly as much as they could if you wait until battle phase. And then that's the other benefit, you can still use your battle phase with this thing. I wish I could run two. I could write a, uh, run a lightning storm, but um, in this case, it barely even came up anyway, so um, it it wasn't applicable in this case, but still, that's where the side deck comes in at. Because two, you don't want to be preparing going uh, possibly first, and then you draw into that card and it does nothing. It would just basically become Imseti or uh, Gold Sark Fodder at that point. So that's it for spells, traps, three imperm, one revolt. Thank you, Konami, for this upgrade, by the way, because this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm hoping to get a QCR soon of that. But, uh, yeah, just regular trap lineup, you know, interruptions, because, again, stopping the right card can really impact your opponent. If your opponent's got something that has, like, an arise heart, like a continuous effect that you need to shut off, this is a good card for that, too. Um... But it's a necessity right now. And thanks to uh, Rarity Collection, everybody has access to one at this point. There's no excuse to not have Imperms and Ashes. Uh, so extra deck, we're going to go into our 
Uh, we got our Ferrajit. Sorry, the light's a little kind of weird here. Uh, we got our Ferrajit. We got our Bear Broom. We got two Shireg. Um, like I said, this deck is a little bit more tilted towards the Tri Brigade stuff now. So, the thing for this is that sometimes you can manage to use a Shireg as a Searcher option. You get your four uh, Tri Beasts and Grave, use an effect, special summon this guy, and then do your old combo of Ferrajit or Durbrum or whatever the case may be. Um, but also just for, as has been used in the past for regular Tri Sprite variants, is that just having the second one as a uh, second, you know, way to come out after this one's expended uh, is just amazing for grind games. But yeah, it, this is a very good ratio. I do want to try to fit in a second Ferrajit, just in the case that sometimes you get a revolt and um, you don't have the zones open enough to do Omen, or you don't have enough of the proper materials to do uh, Omen. Ferrajit will at least let you get your Norval to search follow-up and guarantee that to the very minimal, and give yourself a two-body so that you could use it for something like Smashers, Red, Carrot, whatever the case may be. You just have another body for the sake of IP, make a Ferrajit that is live. Um, but yeah, that's just standard uh, Tri Brigade. Um, this is a must-have for the Tri Sprite variant. Absolute must-have. You can't go without this. Uh, SP the Little Knight's the somewhat flex spot, but in this current format, this is the necessity. Uh, you could do like Unicorn, Cerberus, Phoenix. But the fact that this is a uh, Link 2 is what makes this one all the more better of an option, hands down. And you could target anything from field or graveyard, which is busted, as opposed to having to pick and choose whether you want Cerberus or um, Phoenix. Because more than likely you're going to do Cerberus, but some cases do call for Phoenix. This card does both. It does it better. And it's got extra effects too, which is absolutely busted. But yeah, this pack is absolutely necessary. Uh, one sprint only. I really never understood why people ran more than one sprint. I mean, maybe just for the sake of the bounces, but I just never saw enough resource out of the deck to warrant running a second one. <clears throat> you're not gonna... If your first one doesn't succeed, your second one's more than likely gonna be too late to really capitalize off of. So I never really understood that, but that... I feel is the correct ratio right there. You need to run the Pit Knight early to take advantage of your Bear Broom search. Um, if anybody knows the regular combo line, uh, I'll probably just show it uh, at near the end. Um, integrates a couple combos to show you guys. But um, that's typically how you end off getting your Bear Broom search and doing your stuff. Um, is this card and then again you get the benefit of it being good link material for ip and then being a free negate and zero attack because why not um so then these two are easily flex spots but i run this just because of the variant and what it calls for if i have to do all the tri plays this is the card that you do you only have tri game monsters in hand and maybe you got a foolish burial Foolish Burial, the Angler, get out the two beavers, Fair Sheet, Fair Sheet, Special Summon, like Kit or something. Kit, banish the two, get out, Bear Drum, go into Appaloosa. Uh, sometimes, uh, depending on the deck that you're going against, IP into Appaloosa, as has been done previously with previous Tri Sprite variants. Um, IP into Appaloosa gives you a way to stop Monster Gates. Think Unchained, you could stop Aruha, you could stop the. Um, Saryama, you could stop any of them from starting the ball rolling for their deck, and it's going to force them to have to do their special summons, uh, or, or their normal summon to do anything, really. Um, it, it really dwindles down their plays, depending. And then for Rescue Ace, it lets you negate a um, Hydrant that is untargetable. It helps you negate Turbulence being special summon out of hand. It helps you negate a Turbulence from uh, setting cards. Because uh, the thing is, is that cards are now dodging targeting effects. So the early isn't necessarily enough to stop stop of an effect. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for the Appaloosa. But Griffin, this is just kind of last minute tech. I always have tried this card because this card is undoubtedly broken against decks that cannot link or will like go out of their way to link just to get rid of this. 
Um, it makes things difficult for your opponent. It doesn't really affect you when you are all set up. And the fact that this card can recur, things like Revolt and uh, Starter or Sma uh, Smashers or anything really, it recurs cards that you may have expended and lets you reuse them again. As if Happy doesn't allow you to do that either, but sometimes you do need to access your Revolt, uh, especially um, if you banish it off or send it off of something else, which will bring us in Xerxes. Two Gigantic, you could do one. I mean, a lot of people do one, but I personally recommend two, just because it's a big beater. You can literally take a kit with two materials engraved and make this and have a good 32 beater. It's something that can go into Zeus. Um, it's a good way to go into your combo. It's a good way to OTK your opponent. It's just busted. Um, you can Gigantic into from, like, okay, you can Kit, Special Summon, Bear Room, Link off into this, use that to attach your kit, special summon, caress, kit, send something, caress now has enough, do that. You now have two total 6400 attack, and then you could probably get something else out too on top of that. Like, this card is just way too good for pushes. And now for the best card of this deck, and why Horus is so good, is Night uh, Zombie Vampire right here. This card is just undoubtedly broken. Just the fact that you can send and special summon... Um, at, of your choice out of four cards is just ridiculous. And the fact you could special summon your opponent's monsters in this tournament, I did take somebody's Fremir just for the sake of protection, and it really made um, a Phantasmi have to use its effect and have them destroy their own card. So it made things a lot more difficult for them. But uh, this card is undoubtedly amazing because what I have done is use this mill top four. I mill something like Nerval, uh, Angler, Blue. You special summon the Blue. Now you get the Nerval and the Angler. So you special summon two. You special summon three bodies. All are level two. You're going to get a search off the Blue. You're going to get a search off the, the Nerval. If it's a kit, you send the Nerval and then get the search off that way. So this card is just ridiculous in this deck, undoubtedly. And then again, you can snipe something that your opponent might have that you might actually want. And in which case, right now in this format, I say that's uh, Kish Tier Femrir. But this card is broken beyond a doubt with this deck. And the mills I've had with this are absolutely insane. And then one Zeus. So that's it for the extra deck. Moving on to the side deck. We're going to go into 3DD Crow. Medical. I mean, you're hitting a lot of uh, essential cards for certain decks. You know, you hit the Unchained at the right spot, you can really cripple them. Um, triple uh, Droll, because search decks do exist. Flanderies and uh, Rescue Ace, to an extent, you do this on their uh, Prosperity. You shut them down for the turn completely. Um, so that's it for the monsters for that. Uh, we got... Two Book of Eclipse. This is just kind of, uh, this is a flex spot easily. I do this for the sake of uh, going first against Synchro and uh, Link Climbing decks and stuff like that that require face up uh, monsters for stuff. Um, this is good going first against certain decks. This is good going second against certain decks. Shuts down cards too. Uh, use this in chain to a uh, Crimson Dragon and then it'll shut that off. Use this in chain to like uh, pearly and shut them off. So this is good for those kinds of decks. I do want to run like a third copy or something just equally as prevalent, but so far this is good. And plus you have droplets, so that's kind of a good subsidiary. Uh, just the same way as for this one. Uh, this will do what droplets can't. Uh, tier limit boards where they set up so many monster negates, so many omni negates. That you just need that one card answer. So for the things that droplets can't do. And then you just keep the droplets for anything. Like to run alongside this. Because this is a strong card against certain decks. And then you can you know, like droplets if you don't see this. So droplets is nice and flexible. Uh, very good for multiple situations. Uh, two lightning storm because back row decks. And occasionally, rarely, maybe a monster deck. Full on the race. Hit their uh, M pen. Allow yourself to use uh, special summon and attack position monsters effects. 
but mostly for back row decks. And then for the back row decks that like protection, like Labyrinth, we're doing three evenly. This was kind of just like a last minute. Uh, it was in the side deck. I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think it only came up once in this tournament. I don't mind switching this out for something else. I think I have enough uh, back row destruction or um, just push through force with this deck to where I don't think this is necessary. If anything, we could cut this out for something else and leave it at two, especially since we already have the lightning storms helping cover with that. But um, just keeping in mind and bearing in mind the uh, labyrinth decks that you know can sometimes have that uh, heavenly prison. Uh, Lord of Heavenly Prison, and it protects it from Lightning Storm. This card will let you just push right through that, no problem. Um, a card I would like to run is Ghost Bell for Labyrinth and certain other decks that can utilize uh, Graveyard in some way, shape, or form. I did run into, in the uh, case tournament with my PK Horus, um, Earth Machine, and hitting the Infinite Track, I think it's Traveler, um, Ghost Bell would do more than, uh, D well, DD Crow can essentially hit that, but imagine somebody plays something similar, like a Pot of Avarice, tries to shuffle back cards, um, plays Runic to try to shuffle back cards, um, that would be the Ghost Bell coming in place of that. It's either Ghost Bell or Ghost Ogre, because I'm also seeing a lot of room for Ghost Ogre being very prevalent too. Unchained, use it against their, uh, Link 2, so that they can't link off anything off of you. Uh, use it in response to the um, Rescue Ace Field spell so that they can't normal summon. They can't um, start recurring everything. It completely shuts down their grind game. Um, and then just other decks, you know. Oh, I have this face-up card that's activating its effect. Get rid of it. Uh, sprite matches, gigantic. You know, things like that. So that's it for the deck. Um, I'll go ahead and now kind of show you... Um, I guess I'll do like the the Horus kind of comp, or not, eh, I'll just do a test hand, I suppose. I, I think that's going to be the best way to do this. So, let me go ahead, I'll just set this stuff back up, and then we'll go ahead and just fast forward, or just cut right to, so I'm going to just start shuffling it up. Alright, so do keep in mind, the th problem with this deck in doing test hands is that it is a very reactive deck so it kind of works in tangent and you play it in tangent to how your opponent is responding to you and with what cards and especially if you know what you're playing against how you play differently but the general lines for this deck is pretty much what i'm going to try to aim for right here and show so like as we can see this is a pretty dead hand, but we have our Foolish Burial to really get us going. So then we would just Foolish Burial here. We'll put our hand right down here. You guys can see it. We're going to do our Foolish Burial. We have... We're going to definitely do Angler because we need to get bodies and start doing things with that. Um... And then we use that one's effect, get out our two beavers. Now, this hand was pretty, pretty bad. So, I can't really do too, too much with it, unfortunately. Um, so, the only thing I could essentially do here is to just go into Gigantic... Use its effect. Go into... Um, in this case... So, my Nibiru... The Nibiru would be covered completely. Um, what you could do... And it would kind of hurt to do it too. You go blue, blue effect, add jet. Special jet, jet effect, add... Starter. And then from here, what you can do is link off. And again, this is just trying to get to your optimal end board here. You go into Sprite Sprint. We use our Sprite Sprint's effect. And in this kind of scenario, 
we would do kit effect send nerval nerval add in this case we would do uh, kit So as you can tell, this is a very, 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 very awkward line. You really can't do much here. So the only thing that you could essentially do, because you have to still end with IP and early. If you do that, um, then your bear brim is fully live and you're good to go from there. Um, so here's what we are going to do. We are going to use our second gigantic get rid of that since this is a very rough case we're gonna use our starter we're gonna just leave our um, red and our carrot in deck because we really don't need that blue is expendable in this kind of case because you run three copies of it link those off go into your IP mascarena um, then you normal summon because you haven't normal summon you use your kits Use your kit and banish these two. And you go into your bear broom. And then you link those two off into your early. So now you're going to have your revolt. There we go. Revolt. You have enough materials in Grave, you have two kits, you have a Nerval, you have uh, two Banished Beavers, so that's all live. And unfortunately, you don't have Farajit to do a Mulligan for your uh, Feather Storm. But in a case like this, now you can put the Feather Storm back. Set your two cards, and with that, what you have is you have your omen, you have your um, negate. In a case like this, you don't have an expendable two, so I wouldn't use the smashers or set the smashers and put that on board just yet. Um, but you have your uh, removal and follow up, you have your monster effect negate, you have your monster effect negate, you have your um, so that's the monster effect negate, um, you have your removal. You have your protection for the turn. Um, in a case like this, what you want to try to do is use the revolt first. Because if you do this first and go into um, SP Little Knight, now you don't have any link zones for the revolt to summon to. So you do want to do the revolt first. Special summon into like this zone for early. Um, if they have a monster. It, it, well, in this case, it wouldn't even matter because the IP is going to be one tripping off early anyways. But... Um, that gives you all that, and then you still have the Ash to stop something. Uh, your opponent tries to emergence, um, emergency for your Rescue Ace, this stops it. So that would be a way to, like, as you saw, one card got you what you needed, gives you your follow-up that you needed, and you have a pretty well-established board. You could even go into Appaloosa if you needed to. You could go into Nightmare Griffin if you needed to. Like, it's insane that you can still play with just that one and this is why you still run multiple and various different one card starters because like that that with this and deck gave you game so that's starting our uh, test hand number one so i'll do another test hand and then i guess i'll do a um i'll just show you kind of like the horus line and just guarantee that we have Horus cards in hand and then like something to plus off of. Maybe that would be in this test hand, but who knows? I shouldn't have to power shuffle now. So put all these back. Got our first, second, third, fourth. And there we go. So right there we have our starting hand where we have so many different ways to start our combos that it doesn't matter what your opponent ashes if they ash him seti cool you're gonna get follow up with the seti oh they ash this cool you're just still gonna play through anyways but in the case that you have this in hand just do this first 
especially if you have a way to plus one. So you do that, you're going to add your king sarcophagus, you're going to shuffle up, and then opponent cuts, you draw your one extra card, look at that, you got an interruption for your opponent, now you're going to use your kit's effect, you're going to send the nerval, nerval effect, you might as well just add fractal, honestly at this point. Might as well add Fractal, because then what the idea is behind this is, is that you can use the Fractal as uh, further material to go into, say, a uh, um, an, o an Omen. Uh, you could use it as material for the Caress, while leaving your other kits and your other Caresses in your deck. Um, but yeah, so then that initiates all that. So now you have, with this one, you already have a free entry body. You have a way to start into your sprint if you want to. So that's kind of what we are going to be kind of doing right here, actually. We're going to do the King Sarcophagus. We don't need to do this, the um, the horse at this point. We don't really have to commit too much to that engine. Um, I mean, if you want to, you can. But it's just kind of unnecessary right now. Uh, so you're going to special summon that. Um, and actually, so then this is, so in this case, yeah, we're going to do King Sarcophagus. We're going to send Thwamatef, because again, we want to leave Happy for last. Happy is our recursion. Happy is the way that we guarantee we are going to have a couple cards. Now, the thing I will say about King Sarcophagus is if you're going to use it to special summon, do... Uh, I'm steady first so that your opponent cannot bestial it out of the graveyard. You don't want to get Dwamatef out. Now you have a monster on board. Bestial can snipe this, and now you have to send Happy and do that. So we'll overlay into that. We go into Zombie Vampire, and then Zombie Vampire's effect send the non Imseti because it's a tri beast. And look at this. We now have four materials we can go into Omen if we want to. Again, if we want to. So we send one, we send two, we send three, we send four. Look at how insane that is. Now we get blue, which will continue our combo. We haven't hit both beavers, so now our angler is still alive to use Sprint. Um, we will get a search off of blue because it was special summoned. So at this point, you could, if you want to, you could do red, you could do um, jet into starter. Uh, so you could either go for extension or you could go for protection. Um, a thing that I've been starting to focus on is getting a smashers in hand. So we'll do the jet actually this time. Now with this entire setup, you can just do the rest of the line without normal summoning anything. Because what you do, you link those two off. You go into your sprint, sprint effect, send angler. There's angler, angler effect, special summon two. And it's gonna be beaver and beaver. And actually, no, you are gonna use your normal summon here. Um, and you'll see why I say that. Um, in a case like this, no, you wouldn't even... So the jet doesn't even matter at this point. You just add a jet just to have an extra card. Because what you're going to do, you're going to Gigantic. You're going to use Gigantic as effect. You're going to special summon jet. You're, you're going to use your jet's effect and add a card. So you're going to add, since you already have starter especially, you're going to add smasher. You're going to link these two off, go into your IP, now you're going to normal summon your your kits, you're going to use its effects, banish one, banish two, again you want to banish the stuff you are not going to be like utilizing later, or at, I mean pulling out of for uh, revolt, because you want to make sure there's two so that your omen can search something. So we're going to do that, get out bear broom. Link those two off. Go into Farajit. Uh, 
there you are. Link those two off and go into your early. Look at how many cards you have left in hand. You have the King Sarcophagus, you have the IP, you have the early. Your opponent is going to want to try to get rid of King Sarcophagus because then that you're just going to get free bodies out regardless. Um, so now, this is going to be a, a problem card for your opponent if they can't kill you in one turn. And more than likely, they're not going to with the kind of hand that you have right here. Um, but continuing on, so then we have our Farajit Bear Brum. You go Chain Link 1 Farajit, Chain Link 2 Bear Brum. Even though... Um, Ratio-wise, percentage-wise, uh, the chances of drawing into your revolt is slim in this deck. The chances are certainly not zero, and in my case, I've never had any good luck doing uh, this first, this second, because I will always draw into it and I have to put it back. No, you do want to do the revolt last, because then you do the revolt... Oh, hey, look, I don't need the jet anymore, because I did use it. And then now we do the Farajit, draw one, and look at that. Look at that. Now you have a handful of interruptions. You have a way to get this back, so this doesn't even matter. Omen will get you another one, so that doesn't even matter. So at this point, you can honestly, if you really wanted to, you could set all four of these... But enough would be these two, exactly like the previous one. But again, the chances of somebody Harpy's Feather storming you or Harpy's Feather dustering you, that's the only thing that would break this. It's kind of hard to come by. It's not zero, but it's harder to come by, especially since they haven't really gone through their de their deck yet. Um, well, you did send four from them, so you did kind of dwindle that down a tad bit, but... Um, and see, like, in this case, you would have wanted to send something to get Happy out, but we also want to make sure that we played kind of around Nib, and that was probably the best way to do it. But, yeah, so, in this case, you have, uh, Link Summon on your opponent's turn into Appaloosa, Griffin, or, uh, SP Little Knight. You have... Infinite Impermanence to negate a monster effect. You have Revolt to do removal, follow-up, and a mulligan into something potentially better. You have your Ash to stop a search or a special summon out of deck. King Sarcophagus is going to lay here as a looming threat to your opponent. They have to get rid of this card, otherwise it's going to be a problem for them in the next turn if they cannot kill you this turn. Smashers is going to be an instant removal for cases where IP or early is just not going to cut it. Starter is going to be either an extender or a negate. In the case that you have already used your carrot, it's basically going to be red or blue, or jet in this case, since you do still have starter in deck. Um, so actually considering that, the carrot is engraved, probably actually wouldn't be too good to set this, and since you wouldn't really have enough level 2s to set it would be better to just keep these in hand and make your opponent have to worry about this stuff. Because um, this ultimately... The reason why you would want to set this on this board is to use Carrot to prevent yourself from getting even lead. Um, if you're going game 2, game 3, going uh, first, this is a very good card to set on because more than like your opponent's going to start playing evenly, especially if they know what you're playing. they're playing against. But as you can see, that is the kind of synergy the... Horus engine has with the tri sprite engine. It's just absolutely insane when it goes off. And like again, you didn't even have to hit everything because the sprint will hit what the zombie vampire didn't in terms of sending, and then the zombie vampire will either give you a um a body that you can extend with or a body that you can defend with. So it is absolutely insane what this deck opens up for you. Alright, so I did get to showcase the Horus lines and stuff, so that's pretty good. Uh, the deck is perfectly fine, and it can just run exactly as it has been for how long without it. There's so many times in that uh, Locals tournament that I would just never see my Horus engine until I hit Game 3, if I ever get hit Game 3. 
And then it takes my opponent by surprise because they did not anticipate I was playing Horus. Uh, that's why I did the Rescue Ace player. He didn't even see that I was playing Horus Package until game three. And that just, again, Imseti sends something. And then I got the King Sarcophagus. I drew into the called by. He draws. I used the called by against his draw. Busted. And then I went into Zombie Vampire. And what you saw me send was basically what I sent against him. I believe it was a Caress, a Nerva, a Blue, and then, um, I think, like, Imperm or something, but it gave me two searches, and then I just extended and went crazy and just hit everything. So this deck has insane synergy with itself, with all these engines put together, and I highly recommend you guys give this a try. Um, okay, so that's it for the, tr the, the combos and engine and stuff like that. A bit of advice I want to add on is the side decking part because I think the biggest problem with running multiple engines like this is trying to figure out how to side deck out. Um, what I say is that there are some unnecessary things that I added back into this deck just for the sake of power housing through everything and making this deck strong. Cards like Starter, where I already run one of it, it's not a necessity kind of hate seeing two in your hand when it does happen so this card with the way this deck runs now you can take this out for your side deck to put in something like a droll or something that is going to stop your opponent um you could then keep the one left in deck so that you have a search target for jets or to possibly draw it and be a good starter for you um it doesn't cripple you because you still have your other one card starters never take out your um your Foolish Burial. You can take out your second Caress if you feel the need to. I only usually recommend this if you are going for sure second because you are going to be having to push through boards and stuff. Having one already in hand, the only use that you're going to have out of it is pretty much that you're going to be negging. So I wouldn't really suggest that. Um, another card that I can see yourself taking out so as much as I said King Sarcophagus is great for three, um, particularly going second, you can definitely take one out because you would hate to not you would hate to lose the opportunity of having a counter in your hand versus having this card to like do everything or like multiple copies of it to interrupt what you had in your hand. So I have played where I've taken one to two of these out and I've had no problem. So up to two sarcophagus is perfectly fine. Uh, two would definitely, definitely only exclusively be if you're going into game two. Um, or like if you're going second, I mean. Uh, if you're going second, definitely only reserve taking out two for those. Otherwise, don't do that. Um, one is perfectly fine too. Um... The other one is Fractal because it hasn't ever been a necessity for the deck. It's just to kind of help you. So you're just kind of pushing through everything in game one anyway. So you just want to push through everything. This is a flex spot to put in something that is much more counterintuitive to your opponents being able to play. Um, and then the other, of course, going second for sure is Harpy's Feather Duster because your opponent, you can't use that against your opponent going first. Um, sorry, this is the going first. Um, you could easily do that. Um, and this is kind of somewhere in between. So, like, this is the, uh, going second, going first. Either one. So, either one, going first. Um, well, this one's kind of semi, because this one, depending on the deck, maybe you don't run against a deck that runs a lot of, uh, spell trap. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's how I would put that... Um, let's see, for going first, for going first, the Imperms, because your, uh, your Forbidden Droplets pretty much do that, your early does it, you're pretty much covered already with that, so you don't need your Imperms as much, you could put in something a little bit more stopping power in it, you could put a Droll against a Search deck or something, but more than likely you're just gonna take like one or two out, because you have all these other options too. Like, these are pretty flexible to do. So, that's my advice for the side decking portion. 
Because just basically keep in mind, what you're side decking in is basically going to be a stronger version of what you're seeing do here. Uh, removes cards off a of field. Lightning Storm can do that. Evenly can do that. Um, this is only restricted to spell traps. Maybe you're facing up against Dragon Link. Evenly stronger in that case. Um, infinite Impermanence might be too weak against a full... Uh, it might be too weak against like a full board deck like tier element. It might be um, too minimal uh, to use as like a way to stop interruptions and in plays for like a rescue ace or something. People can do they can dodge it. Forbidden droplets is better in that case. Um, and then I think that's basically it. Uh, Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom would basically be um, if your opponent searches out of deck more than special summons out of deck. Um, you could take one Ash Blossom out. Uh, sometimes you can even take two. I would do the two only if you're uh, going first, so that way you don't have like multiple copies of Ash, because that does kind of suck. But yeah, that would be my advice for side decking. Just keep in mind of uh, the kind of cards that you're putting in, what you're putting in against, um, what it is that is not going to be so impactful against the deck that you're playing against. But what I showed you is pretty much what you are able to kind of flex out because they aren't necessities. The King Sarcophagus, again, is just one of those where it's like you don't need all three. You have the Imseti. Um, You don't really want to get rid of the Imsetis, though, because those are still very good. You get to add the King Sarco, give itself a body to Special Summon, and then you draw one. So it's like kind of like a free mulligan in a way while also initiating a potential plus. But, yeah, I think that about covers this deck. As you can see, it's a very good hand right there, too. Um, but if you guys have any further questions, feel free to comment. Ask them away. I uh, I respond to comments when I, when I can, if I can. Um, so, feel free. I will go ahead and try to answer those questions. As you can tell, I am very passionate about this deck. I've only been playing it for, like, going on, it feels like going on two years at this point. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. Hopefully you guys, you guys uh, enjoy, or consider, sorry, a little bit tired. Um, hope you guys consider trying this build out. I feel like this is a variant that people are sleeping on for Horus. Everybody's so focused on Tournament and uh, PK. You're totally missing out on other decks that have the potential. I'm starting to see people using Horus with Volcanics because of Volcanic Shell being free material, free fodder, um, free send threes, and giving you the whole Horus engine for free. Well, for life points, but um, for certain people are starting to uncover synergy with that. I'm uncovering the synergy with this, and I know other people have in the past too, but I think I've finally found a pretty good and consistent working formula for it. Um, hoping somebody can maybe capitalize on it a little bit better, innovate a little bit better, work on it more. Um, but for the time being, this worked for me perfectly fine. And of course, I do have other tournaments to try this out in to solidify this decision. But this one locals, everything felt so smooth, just silky smooth. It just felt like I could, I wasn't screwed over other than the one game against uh, Rescue Ace where I had Duomit's half in hand. Domitev and Happy are basically going to be the only things that you don't ever want to see in your hand. Because they kind of suck in your hand. But uh, that'll all change when the field spell comes out in the next set. But, uh, alright. I guess I'll just end it off there. Again, if you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions or something like that, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to them when I can. Answer them. But, uh, this is VZ Duelist. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your guys' deck builds and your guys' local tournaments, and best of luck to you guys. Have a good one.